Hi guys, this is Stefan McMillan. And Justin, I can't believe Catalina's in the same room right now, Watson. And you're listening to episode 14 of Exposure, a half hour sit down with some of online's newest and exciting content creators. And today's guest is Chris C. Vlogs. And let's start the show. Hey, Exposure fans. Welcome back to the show. Episode 14. That's insane. And we have a lot of changes going on, don't we, Justin? We do? Yeah, new channel. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I started a channel called The Slowest Network. Well, Slowest Network, not The Slowest Network. Um, And we're going to be uploading all of our podcast stuff on there. We, we Right now, we have three podcasts. Slowless Council, aka Get Steven together every single time he's around. Um, we have Exposure. We have Cataquan, aka Catalina can't remember. And and we have Slowless Reviews where we do our our TV reviews, but Stefan is taking too long with the fall, so we may have to find a TV show he's more interested in. But I digress. Now, the episodes will be delayed on there because we want you to listen on um, your podcast providers. So, if you do want to listen on time, listen here. But if you can't, we understand. But just go to, just in YouTube, type Slowless Network and we will come up. And as usual, we have so many segments for you guys like another Ask Stuff On, a Word of the Week, and Breaking News. Also, we're excited about our guest tonight, um, Chris C. He's going to be chatting with us, and we can't wait. But first, let's start off with a bang with Ask Stefan. If you got some questions and you need some answers, Ask Stefan, Ask Stefan, no matter what. And we're back with another thrilling edition of Ask Stefan, where we try our best to answer the questions you guys send us, or that we got on Reddit. Justin, what's the first question? And our first question comes from Reddit. Okay, guys, here we go. How can I get my office roommate to stop listening to the radio while creating Angus to desk in the office? She is senior level and I am staff. The company doesn't throw titles around and is fair as far as employing equality and whatnot. Anyway, she listens to Z100 all day, and I hate Z100. Top hits radio stations with obnoxious hosts. I'm a rock slash funk slash jazz type. Jazz hands. And, um, that likes the classics. I get you. I get you. I used to wear my headphones, but recently got zinged in my annual review for it being distracting or unproductive. Partners are older and don't get the whole headphones in while plowing through work. In the spirit of full disclosure, I get distracted easily for I have ADHD. But I don't use that as an excuse. So I'd appreciate any advice. I just don't want to kill her vibes because she's been working here for like 10 years and I'm relatively new. Take it as it is. Take it away, Stefan. Okay, well, I can relate to this because I have a co-host who has... I have a co-host who has a limited amount of taste in music. He doesn't like to broaden his horizons and listen to new things. So I can kind of relate to uh, maybe what your roommate is going through. So if there's nothing you can do, I was going to suggest put your headphones on and try to ignore it. But you did bring that up. So I would say maybe give her music a chance. It's Z100. It's pop music. It's not like it's something foreign that you've never heard of and it's impossible to get into. So... Maybe give her music a chance and try to like it. I mean, it's just, it's not forever, so you'll get over it eventually. I like how my taste in music is limited. But my catalog goes past Britney Spears in 1999. I mean, 
you're not very open minded from my experience. How so? Because it called it I didn't say it was bad music, I said it was basic pop. And that's what it was. Generic bubblegum pop. Well, in your opinion, I feel like I've showed you some songs that were like critically acclaimed and your opinion was sort of off. You can pay critics to say what you want. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I know if they pay me enough, hey. So what would you say to her? What should she do in this situation? Well, if she's a nice lady, talk to her. You know, if there's a nice, if it's a nice person, talk to her. Ask her, hey, can we listen to something else today? Um, maybe new shifts or I don't know. Um, bring your own radio or something. Yeah, she didn't um specify. Did she like bring it up to her? Is it like I don't feel like that's something that will cause that big of a fight if you just nicely bring it up that maybe you don't want to listen to her music. Or maybe she should use headphones instead of since they're talking about something being distracting. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, but that's what I would do. Just say, hey. And I don't understand how oh headphones is a problem, but somehow music just randomly in the office is not a problem. Right. Yeah, that didn't make sense to me. How old are these people? Well, is it in college? A college roommate? No, it just says office, like office mate. Uh, oh. Hmm. Okay, well, I mean, maybe you could bring it up to your supervisor. I mean, it has to be someone above her. Yeah, but the thing is, though, she's seen, it says she's senior level and and he's staff or she's staff. So her supervisor may actually be on the same level i don't know it's a strange just a strange place man strange but i would just ask her like hey can we not listen to z100 today or like um stefan said maybe try i mean if you don't like it you don't like it z100 it's not like it's air splittingly bad music like i feel like in this situation you're kind of being a music snob and like it's not that big of a deal but i do understand the radio and listening to the radio can be horrible only because the uh, r- radio replays a lot of stuff right so maybe buy maybe buy her like a title subscription well who has 30 dollars to spare um what's the other one uh apple music or spotify spotify maybe buy her a spotify subscription or just get used to it like you she said she's into like rock music right rock funk jazz yeah that all of that nonsense um so i mean so. Excuse me, this is the found that was the foundation of music. Allegedly. But um I mean I feel like it's Z one hundred. It shouldn't be that difficult to get into it. Yeah, it's but nobody wants to listen to the same anyway. Exactly. And then you don't wanna so you gotta listen to it on your way to work. You gotta listen to it when you're at work. You gotta listen to it when you're at home. You gotta listen to it like who wants to listen to the same thing all the time? Like, I can understand if it was Z Mariah Carey, but it's not. I mean, anyway. Yeah, don't do it. So, I won't. So, my final verdict would be just deal with it for right now. If you really like the job, deal with it. If the music is so terrible that it's causing you all this distress, then find another job. But I think that it isn't that big of a deal, so you'll find a way to deal with it. And it seems like this may be a law firm. So Sua. Okay, no. <laughs> so yeah, that's my um final <laughs> verdict. Is that your final answer? Yes. Are you gonna lock it in? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. And I say sue her. Sue her. Okay, yeah. Well, if you guys, hopefully that was helpful helpful to you. If you guys want to answer anything, send it on over to slowlistnetwork at gmail.com. And we'll try our best to get to it. And we'll be right back in the interview with Chrissy Chrissy. Vlogs. You know what? That's not the first time you've done that. And it won't be the last. See you soon. It better be the last. After these messages, we'll be right back. Yeah. Hey, did you guys know you can get even more content from your two favorite hosts? Just go to YouTube and search Slowless Network. You can catch our reviews of 
popular shows like Bloodline, other podcasts, and full episodes of Exposure. Don't forget to subscribe. So everybody loves online shopping and everyone pretty much loves Amazon. I know I do. It's so convenient and easy to use. Well, now you can do your regular shopping and support exposure by using our affiliate link. That's j.mp forward slash slow list. Use our link and just shop as you usually would. It's free, easy, and you'll be helping out the show. That's j.mp forward slash slow list. That's S-L-W-L-I-S-T. Hi, I'm Thorne from www.youtube.com slash T-H-R-N-E-M-8, and you're listening to Exposure. And we're back with our guest, Chrissy Vogg. Thanks for coming. No problem. What made you get started on YouTube? That question is one of the biggest questions that people ask me. And that kind of is my only YouTube question that has one answer. And that is because before YouTube, I was very antisocial. It was, I didn't really talk to many people. I I had a very small group of friends because everybody else was kind of just like, oh, do I know that person? So I started off because I wanted to become more comfortable with larger crowds of people. Well, what, what made you decide to go into vlogging? Vlogging was because I didn't know anything about gaming or any of the other categories, so I just thought it was the easiest category to A, edit, and B, to just do, because I actually wanted to be very one-on-one with people who were watching me instead of, like, gaming and they get to see what I'm playing or um, anything else like that. So, who was some of your big YouTube inspirations? Um, I gotta go with probably Shane Dawson. Oh. Why? Um, Shane and Jenna Marbles because they both, they really find the comedy in everything that they say. And I found that to be one of the most important things when I'm putting out a video, to always include comedy because it keeps the person really like watching and listening. And what would you say is one of the best things about doing YouTube? The best thing about doing YouTube is you basically grow a whole community and you get to react to those people and you get to watch other videos and um, you just, you find so many other people on YouTube like I have the same friends with so many other people on YouTube that it's just so fun to hear these other people and hear their stories about like fans and videos and errors with videos. And what would you say is the worst part of being a YouTuber? Definitely that your community, some people in your community don't really respect privacy. And like before I actually gave out my full name, people were finding my Instagram and my personal Twitter. and. It always amazed me like how fast they found those things. Because I was so careful, like on my Instagram it was only Christy, on Twitter it was only Christy, so like they couldn't actually track me by the name. Um, but the way that they found me was because I was following my YouTube channel's account. Mm. Well, what does your friends and family think about your channel if they know about it? <laughs> um, only parts of my family know about it. Well, everybody in my family knows my channel. But my mom still actually thinks that every single video is private, and she keeps on asking me, how do I find your videos? Um, <laughs> but it is funny when your friends find your channel, and they watch one of the really old videos, and um, one of my friend's moms, actually, their whole family watches my videos every week. What I find so funny, and that's really where the content has been so, like, it used to be just random content that I didn't really care about, 
but now it's kind of became more censored content. <laughs> and speaking of, you know, being censored and stuff, do you think um, YouTube should be more family friendly as a whole? Well, I really, at the beginning of YouTube, I would swear in some videos. And then I looked at the ages that were coming to my channel and I said, ooh, at that age would I have wanted to know that word? So I really taken it into consideration of, at that age, I didn't know that word, so I don't want to teach these people that word. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure where you're from, you don't have to say, but do you feel like your location is impacting the success of your channel? I'm from Boston, um, <laughs> and I don't think so because I'm in a suburb of a suburb, basically, so there really is, like, it's only in my school where people have found my channel, where also teachers have found my channel. Well, do you think it's harder to find people to collaborate with? Most definitely, because um, in Boston, there are a lot of different suburbs and a lot of far away towns. And also, a lot of the YouTubers in Boston that I've like talked to are very unactive on YouTube. Like, they'll post every three months, basically. And um, I know Boston's a big city, but would you ever consider moving to New York or LA? your YouTube career? Actually, New York was, New York is one of the places that I really want to go to just because it's so full, but um, LA is somewhere I do want to try to go to in many years, but um, New York is probably a close to move. Well, let's, I like to talk about the state of YouTube, and I would like to get your opinion on that. Um, so what do you think about how YouTube is being run right now? Because as we all know, there was a big Google acquisition that they had. So do you think they'll focus more on the bigger corporations going into the future, or do you think they'll try to go back to putting more attention on the content creators? I most definitely think that YouTube is kind of becoming a very sold out place, because, so to speak, although there are a lot of great YouTubers on there, YouTube is putting so much of their own ads out there, like, you search somebody, the first three results are sponsored results for YouTube. But also in consideration of YouTube putting all of those ads, you have to think about how they're letting us use their platform for free, so they also have to make that set. Do you, what does it, what do you think a successful YouTube career looks like for you? A successful YouTube career looks like for me, isn't somebody who is just making money off of YouTube. Because that really isn't in consideration. You don't have to have YouTube as your primary source of income. Um, my successful channel would be a channel where the community is watching, they have a good amount of views, and they are very interactive with their people on Twitter. What well, do you see yourself still being a YouTuber 10 years from now? I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> 10 years from now, I might. But I think the channel would change dramatically in 10 years from now. But I'd still like to see that. And for people that aren't familiar with your content, how would you describe your channel and your content? That is one of the questions that anytime I go in with a sponsorship with a company, it always changes. Because over time, and I think every YouTuber knows this, that your channel changes around you growing on YouTube. So my channel right now is most definitely comedy because I throw that into every video that I do and every video that I produce because I want to laugh when I'm watching a YouTube video so I make sure that you can watch mine laugh. So right now it's most definitely comedy and the content is pretty high quality. So you've been working on your channel and seeing how YouTube is today and knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? I would not use PowerPoint. <laughs> I watch my old videos and literally cringe. Um, what is the best comment you ever received? The best comment I have ever received is, um, I think the content, the comment that I should be a comedian, or, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, that's one of the best comments. Um, yeah, I get that a lot. Because at the beginning of my channel, the most comment, the most con, the most things that people were saying was that I have a high pitch voice. What I do, and I've known that, so it really is an original comment. Well, oh, okay. So, I'm curious, are you on a YouTube network right now, currently? Yes, I'm with Freedom. Mm, okay, well, as a, I guess, smaller channel, do you feel like 
YouTube network for Worst of Type? Um, I most definitely do because YouTube network really, although there are big YouTubers in a lot of networks, but you just have to find the network that has a smaller YouTuber included because the network freedom I know of that it gives you the opportunity to really interact with other YouTubers and find collabs. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best things that I find about freedom and other networks that I've been with. So like sometimes when I sit down to do a video, I can't really think of what I want to do, what skit I want to create. And I call it video block. Do you ever get video blocked sometimes? Yeah, um, I have sometimes created a full video dialogue and then when I get in front of the camera, I'm just like, wait, this isn't that great of a video. <laughs> and I'll just sit in front of the camera and I, and I have to edit out like the first 10 to 20 minutes of the video, just me um, rethinking the video in my head. And it's so funny because sometimes I'll even like talk to myself on what I'll say in the video, just to make sure that it comes out right. Well, you mentioned that you're a Shane Dawson fan. I know Justin's a big fan too. So who would you say is one of the most influential YouTubers out today? Most definitely Jenna Marbles because I like to make troll videos. So I'm also always watching her videos and just seeing how she trolls people. So we have Shane Dawson, Joey Graceffa, Alfie, and Zoe. Well, Alfie kind of. Um, they all wrote books. Uh, would you ever plan on writing a book? Um, I don't know. I probably wouldn't. Just because I'm not one of the people who would read a book, so I wouldn't <laughs> write a book. I'd most likely make like a documentary, because I'd watch that, but um, not a book. You know, that would make more sense for YouTubers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have never... I've never gotten why YouTubers write books because they're also always making videos. So if you really think about it, why would their fans just for some reason switch over to reading this probably really long book? Mm -hmm. So what kind of YouTubers would you describe as, I suppose, your least favorite? My least favorite type of YouTubers. I'm not going to name names because I've done a collab with this person, but um, oh. the ones who buy their subscribers. Oh. And the way you can find that out is if they have a certain amount of subscribers that is fairly large and they get five views a video, they bought their subscribers. We've seen it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done it. I've almost done a collab with a person, and the next day their subscriber count went from 1,000. 55. Oh. Yep. Um, and what about your most favorite? Um, my most favorite is most definitely, um, I've done a collab with her, Morgan Cook, for small YouTubers, because she is just... Oh, we're going to interview her soon. Yeah, she, she just, she creates really great content and makes sure that she interacts with her fans and... It's just really fun to see her videos because she edits them so wildly. Like she doesn't have a scheme of how to edit. She just she edits every single video differently. So it is really fun to watch that. And it's, she's also one of the small YouTubers that I can say I watch every video. Oh, that's cool. And so I was talking about like making videos. How do you prepare to do a video? Um, I prepare to do a video by just when it's a day that I feel like doing one, there really is no preparation for me. It is just, okay, today I feel like filming a video. So there's been a few controversies <laughs> on YouTube. What would you say is was the most interesting scandal that's gone on recently? Sam Pepper, I gotta say, um, was probably one of the worst because that was most definitely not a first day experiment. And for him, just not to not admit it mm -hmm. to his whole community is ridiculous and it kind of seems like he should have just been seen. Because I think a ton of people on YouTube have just lost all respect for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have any YouTube goals for this year? My biggest YouTube goal for this year, at least. Um, well, for this new year, I think it is to reach 
300 subscribers or 400 subscribers. And would you ever do YouTube as a full-time job? Most definitely. If it was a full-time job, I would read a ton of comments and just make sure that I'm always interacting. Mm -hmm. That's true. All right, so these two final questions will be putting you on the spot, so hopefully you're ready. The first question is, if for someone who's never heard of your channel before, why should they subscribe to you? Why should they subscribe? Because I'm very confident in my videos. Um, I make sure to interact with them, and I put out two videos a week and make sure they are high quality and not just a video that it took me two minutes to film. And for the second question, if you could have a YouTuber's login for 24 hours, you can do something nice, you can do something mean, you can promote yourself on PewDiePie, or you can delete Shane Dawson's channel, who would you pick and what would you do? Um, who would I pick? Um, I would pick Jenna Marbles and I would promote myself on her channel. Um, is there any reason why Jenna Marbles like over PewDiePie? Because PewDiePie is gaming and Jen Marbles is a lot of um, trolling. So <laughs> it'd be a relative channel. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, awesome. It was so much fun getting interviewed. Thanks for having me. Guys, we're back with word of the week and this time it is a phrase and in the spirit of Rachel Dozel Rachel Glozel we have species dysphoria a feeling that one a fe I'm sorry a feeling that one is in the body of the wrong species Alyssa I told the shrink that they feel like a wild animal trapped in a human body and she said it sounds like classic species dysphoria. Jackies, I know I was meant to be a dolphin, why did I end up a sexy human instead? Species dysphoria sucks. Jerry, if only I'd been born a bird, I wouldn't have to spend so much money on flying, parachuting, hang gliding, skydiving, and base jumping. Damn species dysphoria. dysphoria. I mean, I mean that sounds just as logical as transracial. I mean, I'm like a bird. I want to fly away. You know, what's another song? I know there's more. Um, I the tiger. In the arms of a tiger. Run away. Let me claw you. Let me scratch you. Let you bleed. <laughs> okay. Vocal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ooh. 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 What about, right, if I have a condition where I want to be with Houston without the drug problem? Well, then you wouldn't be Whitney. Hey, she was more than a drug problem. Mm -hmm. Do we have a third co-host? <laughs> 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 no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> it went over her head anyway. Just so kidding. we needed her on 9-11. Word, Word of, of the, the week. week. You're going to stop that, okay? And we'll be right back with some more breaking news. See you soon. Hey guys, it's Stefan. Hope you're enjoying the episode so far. Justin and I are now making it easier than ever to get your exposure fix. Along with YouTube and iTunes, you guys can now check us out on TuneIn, Cast Roller, and Double Twist. Just search Exposure with Stefan McMillan and Justin Watson. And now, back to the show.
Hey guys, Justin here, and I just want to take a moment to tell you, Exposure is such a joy to do, even though Stefan is a part of it. But to maintain our consistency, we need your help. Patreon.com is a site where people can give money monthly to support their favorite content creators. If you love us, head over to Patreon.com slash Slowlist. See you there. Hi ho folks, this is Turwinkle of the Adventures of Turwinkle, the Gnome Mage at youtube.com slash palmerbomber1, and you're listening to Exposure. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. Leave us a rating on iTunes or whatever platform you are listening on, Stitcher, TuneIn, etc. If you want to be a guest, please go to our web, our blog, exposurepodcast.blogspot.com. Click Be a Guest, fill out the form, and we'll get right back at you. If you want to support us, please go to patreon.com slash slowlist. Donate a little something each month, and you'll get some perks. And thank you so much for our guest, Chris C. Vlogs, for coming on. He was a great guest. He was so much better than Stefan. We'll be. <laughs> and we'll um, see you guys next time on another episode of.